Hello everyone, welcome back, and today we are looking at question 118, which is Pascal's triangle. So the question is straightforward, we are given the number of rows, and we want to return Pascal's triangle out of it. So they are saying that in Pascal's triangle, each number is the sum of the two numbers directly above it, as shown below. So let's look at this. Okay, so I have a picture of Pascal's triangle, and I have a picture of example 1. They gave us that the number of rows equals 5, and they want us to generate Pascal's triangle for 5 rows. I have drawn a picture, and we will inspect this picture and take some important notes about it. So, I want you to notice that the first thing is that the rows and the columns are zero index. Just like an array, the rows and columns are zero index. As we can see, we have the first row as index 0, we have the second row as index 1, we have the third row as index 2, and so on. Now let's look at the column indices. So this one only has one column, and it will be index 0. This row has two columns, so it will be index 0, index 1. The third row, it has three columns, so 0, 1, and 2. As we can see, the rows and the columns are zero index. Okay, so now let's look at the second thing that we need to draw some attention to. When i equals zero, as you can see, j will also be equal zero since we only have one row and one column. But let's look at the second row where i equals one. We see that j starts from zero and go all the way to one. Again, look at the third row, i equals two. So j will start at zero and it will go to two. So basically, j will start at 0 and it will go all the way to i. Here i is 3, j start at 0 and it go all the way to j equals 3, which is i. Again, when i equals 4, j will start with 0 and go all the way until j equals 4, which is i. So I want you to notice that when j equals 0 and when j equals i, the number that we will have in the triangle is always 1, okay? So here, j is 0, so we will have a 1. Here, j is 0, we will have a 1. And now here, j is 1, which is equals to i, so we will have 1. Now, when i equals 2, let's see, j equals 0, we will have a 1, we will go all the way to i. Here, j equals 2, which, which is equals to i, so we will have another 1. Now, when i equals 3, at j equals 0, we will have a 1, and at j equals 3, which is equals to i, we will have 1, and so on. So when j equals 0, when j equals 2i, we will have a 1. Okay, so now let's look at the code. They want us to return a list of lists. Basically, as we can see here, here is the outer list. Here it is. So this is a list, and it contains another list. This big outer list is basically the Pascal triangle. So let's make it um, from the start. So we have list. And this list will contain what? We said this list will contain other lists. So this list will contain other lists. And these inner lists will contain integers. So in integer. What should we call this outer big list? I will call it Pascal triangle. So Pascal triangle. I will just write T for triangle and equals new array list. So array list. Okay, now let's check the following. If the number of rows equals zero, we don't have a Pascal triangle, right? So we have nothing, we have zero rows. So let's check this. If the number of rows equals to zero, just return um, the empty list that we will have. So we just return Pascal triangle, Pascal triangle. Just return this empty list basically. So now let me ask you this. We want to make our code easier. So before diving to the code, let's look at this. We have one here. We said always the first row and the first column will contain the one. In other words, the first list in the triangle will always be a one. So let's just make this list from the start. So we will have list and this list will contain integer. So in integer, and I will call it the first row, okay? So equals new array list and what this first row will contain it will only contain one so first row dot add a one that's it 
So now we created this small list, it contains one, and now we need to add it to the triangle itself. So we created a list for the Pascal triangle. So let's add it. So Pascal triangle let's add first row. Good. Now all of our work will start from the second row, or in other words, when i equals one. So let's see how we will do this. We need to keep track of the number of rows. So I will keep track of the um, number of rows and J will keep track of the number of columns. So now we will have a for loop for int I equals what? We said we already took care of when I equals zero. So we will start from when I equals one, which is the second row. And now I is less than uh, number of rows. So num rows and I plus plus. Okay, now we said that we will always start with the one and we will always end with the one. And now for the numbers in between, we said we will look at the previous row and add the numbers that are directly above the number we want. For instance, if we are here, this tree, we go to the previous row, we see one and two, we add them. So we need to keep track somehow of the previous row. So let's say list and this list will contain integer, so integer, and let's call it previous row, right? And how should we get this? Well, as you can see, we already made um, the first row, which is the previous row for this row. So the previous row will be Pascal triangle dot get I minus one. So this, we will always get the previous row. We already have the first row, so now we can have it. So the previous row now equals the first row. Now we have the previous row. Now we need to make a list for the current row so we can add it to the Pascal triangle. So we can say list, this list will contain integer and we can say this is called the current row. Okay, and new array list. Okay. And now we said we will always start with the one, we will always end with the one. So let's do that. So the current row dot add, we want a one at the start and we want a one at the end. But we need some numbers in between. So we will have a for loop between these two. Okay, this should be um, current row. So we need a for loop in between. For what? We said j will keep track of the number of columns. So for int j equals 1. Why 1? Because we already added the 1. Look at this. If we are here, we added this 1. So we took care of when j equals 0. So we want to start when j equals 1. So for int j equals 1 and j is less than i j plus plus. Now you might ask, why should we go less than i and why not less than or equals to i? Well, we see that j starts from zero and it goes to i indeed. But we said we always start with the one, we always ends with the one. We don't want to go here because we already added this one at the end. We want to go to one step before it. So we want to go for j less than i, okay? This is the reason. And now what should we do here? Well, we said for each number, we will go to the previous row and add the numbers directly above it. So how should we go to the previous row? So let's see. We will add something to the row that we are at. So current row dot add. What should we add? Let's think about this. We said for each number, we will go to the previous row. Let's imagine we are here. Okay, we are here. Now, so we want to add something. What should we add here? We said we want to go to the previous row. So let's write previous row. We already have it, so previous row. Okay, once we go to the previous row, we want to add the two numbers directly above it. Now, if we here at j equals one, we want to add the numbers at j equals zero and at j equals one. So we say current row dot add previous row of j minus one, because if we are here, we want to get the two numbers directly above it, which is the one before it and the one here. 
So previous row at j minus 1 plus previous row at j. If we are at this second 3, we see that j equals 2 here. Now, we go to the previous row. Here's the previous row, and we see we will take this, we will take this, okay? So basically, j minus 1 give us this, and j give us this. So current row dot add previous row of j minus 1 plus previous row of j. Now we fill up all these numbers up to i minus 1, and now when we reach to i, we will say current row that add 1. Now we finish the row and we need to add it to the triangle. So Pascal triangle that add this current row. All right? And at the end just return Pascal triangle. So return Pascal triangle. And yeah, before we continue, this should be a previous row dot get. So dot get and here you see previous row dot get and yeah now it should be it so let's run the code and let's submit as we can see faster than 100 percent so let's look at the time and space complexity as you can see starting with the time complexity we have nested four loops and if we have n rows, the time complexity would be being O of n squared, where n is the number of rows. And for each of these rows, we will move through the columns. Okay, so now looking at the space complexity, we have a list of lists. This list will contain the rows, and each row will contain columns. So the space complexity is also being O of n squared. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, best of luck to you, and see you in the next one.